because I guess this just went down. And the suspicion is that this is going to maybe become the norm. Uh, Zocodome writes, last week, Ohio Casino Control Commission Executive Director Matthew Schuler approved the NCAA's request to ban player-specific prop bets on intercollegiate athletic competitions. So what is a player-specific prop bet? Well, let's just say, I'll give you an example of one um, just off the top of my head. Yesterday, somebody might have bet a dollar on Patrick Kane to score a goal. Anytime? Anytime. All right. And if that player then goes and scores the goal, good for you. A player prop bets, when let's when this relates to football or something, it's, it's hey, C.J. Stroud to throw for over 300 yards. Yep. More than two touchdown passes or whatever. But, but you know, there'll be over-unders on a player. Tyson Walker, 18 and a half points. Do you bet the over or the under on that? But this, so that's a, a player specific prop bet, and the state of Ohio is banning those, outlawing those. Story goes on to say all college player prop wagering for individual games effectively is finished due to concerns about player harassment by betters and inside information being sought and, sought and leaked. One of, uh, excuse me, Ohio regulators have been quick to take operators to task over advertising and were ahead of the curve in recognizing and reacting to player harassment. Story goes on to say, I suspect Ohio won't be the last state to ban college player prop betting. Gambling industry analyst Steve Ruddock suspected similarly this morning as well. The NCAA and its president and former Massachusetts governor, Charlie Baker, are lobbying state lawmakers for similar prohibitions. So when you think about sports gambling, and I think the transition from a non-gambling United States of America to a gambling United States of America when it comes to sports gambling has has gone reasonably well. There have been some issues, obviously. We all know about the Jamison Williams suspension. There's a kid at LSU that has, that they just found out had a, was betting like crazy when he was at LSU. You had the players at Iowa and Iowa State that were suspended. Was it Alabama baseball? There was Alabama baseball. There have been some issues. But the worst of the issues we, I don't think we've seen yet any examples of game fixing. Have we? No, I don't think so. Where one of the easiest ways to fix a game, I think the most vulnerable of the college athletes, because while they are getting paid, they're not getting paid professional money. Some of them are, but most of them aren't. And how easy it would be to manipulate a college player prop. Right, I mean, mm-hmm. if you're if you have a player with a total, no, this uh, see if I can find one on my phone real quick for a game tonight. But if you have a player with a total, and that total is to score sixteen and a half points, that player could easily limit the amount of points they scored. Sure, and they are the ones with the least amount of money in their pocket relative to professional athletes, so they might be a little bit more tempted to take. Such a thing, and they're trying to make this. They're trying to make college props not a not a thing that are easily fixable before somebody gets busted for fixing them. Now, maybe am I not thinking of one? Ken, can you think of a college athlete or any athlete that's been busted for fixing a game since gambling became a thing a couple of years ago? I can't. Uh, no, not fixing. I mean, busted for gambling on the games. Yeah, that's different. Yep. But some people think it's the same, Doug. You know, uh, Armando Baycott tonight for North Carolina, over under 14 and a half. Years he's been there? It seems like a long time. <laughs> like I, right? I bet the over. <laughs> no, uh, over and under 14 and a half. This is something that would be vulnerable to, to fix it. So Ohio's gotten rid of it, and the story goes on to say expect it elsewhere as well. I think you can expect it elsewhere. It it wouldn't bother me in the in the least if they got rid of prop bets for college games because it, it it's different when you're a kid who's going to school and somebody sees in the hallway or sees in the classroom or after classroom it's too easy for someone to go walk up to him and say hey man what do you think of uh, 
Are you gonna are you gonna complete more than ten passes in this game, or <laughs> are you thinking gonna? How about throwing Jerry the ball more than twice? You know, I, I think that stuff probably happens a lot mm-hmm. because of just the association that they have being in the general public of a university. Whereas professionals, you know, they can limit who their contact is with. You know, they 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 get up in the morning, they drive to the, you know, to Allen Park. If we're looking at the Lions, stay there all freaking day. Come back in the afternoon, they go straight home, whatever. You know, they may not have to be out in public as much. College kids are because they have to go to class, they're on campus, the whole bit. There's just more of an opportunity for them to be uh, harassed. Yeah, but to me, it's not even that because it only takes one person to get in someone's ear, an athlete's ear. To me, it's the money thing. Professional athletes just make way too much money for this to even like, that, that you shouldn't even be considering it. The minimum player in the NBA makes like, other than the rookie contracts, are like seven, eight, ten million dollars. If you're making ten million dollars, you know? somebody asks you to fix a game, they're going to have to give you like a million bucks, which means that person wants to make it up when they go place a bet. And if somebody places a massive, huge whale total on a player to make sure that they win at least their million dollars back and make it worth their while, that's probably going to get red flagged. At the college level, I mean, these some of these players are living in dorms with other students who, I, I mean, I, I can only speak for my kids that are in college. They're scraping to make ends meet. They're learning how to live poor and going for the quick buck. Well, when you're living with a non-athlete, mm-hmm. non-athlete can bet all he wants. Athlete cannot. So can you imagine what that, that how difficult that's got to be, you know, if you're in a situation and where some where your roommate who's not an athlete it starts quizzing you on stuff? I mean, it's uncomfortable. Gator, I can't if, if I so much as you know, I, I I just I'm not very good at breaking rules. I worry that you know I'll be the guy that gets caught when people go. I don't know why you pay for cable, just jailbreak right. it. Yeah, jailbreak it. Great, buy that illegal fire stick. The fire and, sticks illegal. Jailbreak is not. I uh, said so the illegal one. Yeah. Buy the illegal one. And then you never have to pay for anything and you get everything. The moment that I get one of those and plug it into my TV Mm -hmm. will be the day that the federal government will figure out how to track them and I'll end up in prison. What I like about this is I think about Doug in college. I made some stupid decisions. Would I try to fix a game? I I don't think I would, but I could see myself if everybody in the dorm knew, hey, so-and-so is going under tonight. How many kids would start placing massive bets on that to try and score some extra cash? Could I have got swept up in something like that? I probably would have been more vulnerable than I am now as an adult. And yet, and the reason I'm bringing up we haven't heard this happen before is because I actually think this is looking out for the well-being of the youngest and most vulnerable out there that can gamble and those that play the game before somebody Fs up real bad. Well, there's all this as part of it, right? The other part of maybe why they're doing this is because you're thinking about college age kids that are making the bets and worried about getting gambling addicts out of college age kids Mm -hmm. that they're going to college, but they're not going to class. All they're doing is, is doing all the research on, on sports betting. Some are successful. A lot are not. Suffice it to say though, I, this feels more proactive than anything. This is a proactive move. It would be, yeah. And I don't hate it because, look, I put my dollars down here and here and there, but this doesn't really change my habits or my lifestyle. Now, there's probably some people out there that say, I bet college props all the time. I don't want to see this go away. Yeah, but there's a big difference too because you're you're risking a dollar, literally a dollar at a time. I literally am. So for the people that have a $100 bet on, on a parlay with props and all that, those people are like, what are you doing? You can't do that. There's, why am I being shut out? Because, you know, there's a potential risk. Of course, there's a risk in everything you do. I could see the diehard gamblers getting pissed about this. 